And people uh, know this all too well with type 1 diabetes if they uh, experience hypoglycemia. It's you know, unfortunately quite common due to just the difficulty in managing exogenous insulin around food, uh, food being the most powerful regulator of glucose control in the context of that disease. And so, uh, and, and when you talk about things like exercise, the most important stimulus is the exercise itself. The nutrient <laughs> and subsequent response around that is actually incredibly less important. So uh, you, you can see this in a number of studies actually in and outside of type one diabetes where you can appreciate the, the, the stimulus of exercise and like attenuating breakdown of muscle and a caloric restriction is so much more important than nutrients itself. I mean, once you start exercising the effect of protein, it can support it, but it's actually infinitely less important than the stimulus itself. So, um, so I, I, the short answer is I do think it matters. I think it's maybe much more important for the people who are focused on high you know, world-class level athletics or elite athletics where they, they really need to pay attention to these things to get that one to 2% benefit. And, and in the context of type one diabetes, you're actually shuttling it to peripheral tissues, particularly muscle. So there is something to be considered there, like powerful potential effects to leverage. Uh, if you know what you're doing, can that lead to, you know, augmentation of performance outcomes or subsequent outcomes with, with exercise. And I think what we often appreciate is that, you know, looking at circadian literature around exercise, it seems like number one, the hierarchy is exercise first. It doesn't matter when you do it, yeah. just do it. The more you do it, no matter when you do it, the better it tends to be for you, especially over time, because there might not be literature on it yet, but you can go talk to someone with lived experience who is seeing their actual 24 seven glucose levels on a regular basis and get some insights from that. It's certainly, I will say as a researcher, the most powerful thing that I've ever had to understanding metabolism was my lived experience with type one diabetes. It was only the knowledge and experience from traditional academic classes and, and knowledge that came from that, that gave me understanding to what I actually experienced mm -hmm. with my metabolism with type one diabetes around insulin and, and glucose. And never disregard anecdote. I feel like, you know, it's, Maybe to a certain degree, you can disregard certain anecdote, but the reality is like your lived experience, someone that obviously has a lived experience where you're getting every single nook and cranny of data that you could possibly get, yeah. that's a true lived experience. 